Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in today's session we are going to study the different properties and drawbacks of natural rubber. Natural rubber has various properties but there are many drawbacks as well. And that is the reason why we need to vulcanize the rubber. Vulcanization is nothing but addition of certain chemicals or certain elements like sulfur to it to make sure that we can enhance the properties of it. But for that we should first know the properties and the drawbacks of natural rubber which we will be studying in today's session. Properties and drawbacks of natural rubber. The natural rubber has the following properties, we can also call it drawbacks. The first one is, its plasticity is greater than its elasticity. Now any element or any substance has two properties. The, it can be either plastic or elastic. It can be either plastic or elastic. It can either possess the property of plasticity or it can possess the property of elasticity. Now what are the plastic properties? Plastics are generally hard, they are brittle, they do not have good tensile strength, you cannot stretch a plastic. And what about elasticity? Elasticity is the property in which those materials are soft, they have good tensile strength, they can be stretched, they are not brittle. So now whenever I talk about rubbers, rubbers are generally elastic in nature, that means they have the property of elasticity. But natural rubbers tend to have more properties of plasticity than elasticity which is not desired. To convert those properties of plasticity to elasticity, we need to vulcanize them. It cannot sustain stress. Now what exactly is stress? Any external kind of pressure or any external kind of substances which needs in stretching of the substance is known as stress. So if I take a rubber and I stretch it, it has to get stretched and when I leave it, it has to come back to its original position. But for natural rubber, if I stretch it, it will just remain deformed like that. Or there are chances of it just breaking off as it is brittle as well. Thus, when stretched to a great extent, it undergoes deformation permanently. So, if I take natural rubber and stretch it and I leave it, it may get deformed permanently. Point number two, it has large water absorption tendency which makes it weak. If I take rubber in an atmosphere which is humid, if it starts absorbing water from the atmosphere, the water content inside that rubber material will be very high. Because of the water content being high, the physical and the chemical properties of that rubber will be degraded. And thus, a proper rubber should not absorb any water from it. If I take that natural rubber piece and I put it in a tub of water, then it will take in water, it will absorb in water, the water will seep inside it and it will change the physical and chemical properties of it, which is not desirable. Point number three, it has very low tensile strength and the tensile strength is up to 20 kg per centimeter square. The tensile strength of all elastic properties should be generally higher, but for natural rubber, it is very low. Point number four, due to large percentage of unsaturation in the structure. Now, what do we mean by unsaturation in the structure? Let us first see the structure of rubber. Structure of rubber is nothing but hydrocarbons containing carbon as well as hydrogen. So over here, I'll have carbon, carbon, bonded with double bond and then there will be other carbon that is methyl groups attached to it. This is the structure of rubber. Over here if you see this carbon and this carbon are attached by a double bond. This is known as unsaturation. That means any carbon which is attached by either double bond or triple bond is known as an unsaturated carbon. Any carbon which is attached by a single bond is known as a saturated carbon. So these are unsaturated carbons and because of the percentage of unsaturation of the structure being higher, it is easily attacked by various reagents. It is very easy to attack this second bond over here which is known as a pi bond. This bond is a weak bond and because of this many reagents can come and attack this bond. So what are the reagents which attack the bond? It can be a strong acid like nitric acid HNO3, another strong acid sulfuric acid H2SO4, Organic solvents, there can be any organic solvents. Organic solvents are nothing but alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acid, aromatic groups, phenols, etc. It can be air. Now what exactly in air? The oxygen or the ozone. That means O2 can attack it, even O3 can attack it. And as a result, the natural rubber naturally gets slowly disintegrated or deformed. The next property, the fifth property is it possesses high percentage of tackiness. Now tackiness is a property which can also be associated with stickiness. So for example, if I take natural rubber, I touch it, there are high chances of it sticking to my fingertips, which is not good. If I take a rubber band, 
to just roll a paper and tie it with a rubber band and if that rubber band sticks to the paper then it may degrade the quality of the paper as well which is not desirable and it is very difficult to remove that rubber back from the paper and thus the property of tackiness should be rest in an, any kind of polymer or rubber. So the possesses percentage of tackiness is high property of developing stickiness on a substance which makes difficult to store the rubber stocks. Point number six is the durability. If I have a rubber which can be attacked by acids, which can be attacked by oxygen, which can be attacked by ozone, which can absorb water, which has high percentage of tackiness, then the durability or the shelf life of that rubber becomes extremely less and we'll have to keep it with a lot of protection for almost everything around it. And that is the reason why the durability and abrasion resistance of rubber is very, very low. Thus, natural rubber does not have desirable properties. Hence, to make the maximum use of it, it is essential to improve or to enhance the properties of it. And that is the reason why we do a process known as vulcanization. The process by which undesirable properties of natural rubber are improved is known as vulcanization. Any catalyst used to improve the drawbacks of natural rubber are known as the vulcanizing agents. One of the most important vulcanizing agent or most commonly used vulcanizing agent is sulfur. One of the most commonly used vulcanizing agent is sulfur. So now let us quickly review all the undesirable properties or the drawbacks of rubber with the help of this diagram. So over here this is natural rubber. Again it is very important for us to understand it is natural rubber not vulcanized rubber. This is the rubber which we naturally get from trees. Let us start with the first property of it being highly tacky. Tacky is nothing but stickiness. So whenever this rubber will get attached to something it will stick to it. If you take natural rubber in the hand it will just stick to the hand. If you use natural rubber to tie something for example papers it will stick to the papers and it is very difficult to remove that rubber back from the papers. And that is the reason why tackiness is not a desirable property. It should be low in tackiness but natural rubbers are generally high in tackiness. The next property over here, it is more plastic and less elastic. Plasticity and elasticity are two important properties of any kind of material and generally rubbers tend towards elasticity but natural rubber has more plasticity towards it. That means it is brittle, it gets stretched and once it gets stretched it gets deformed, it does not get back to its original shape and size and all of these properties are of plasticity. And thus we need to vulcanize it to get from plasticity to elasticity. That means increase the elastic effect of it rather than the plastic effect of it. The third property over here is low sustenance to stress. So any kind of stress given to it, stress is nothing but any kind of external pressure given to it, is not taken well by rubber. So it may either break off or it can change its shape and size permanently. The fourth drawback over here is low abrasion resistance. Because water is good at absorption of water, the amount of water quantity in that rubber increases and because of that the abrasion resistance of that particular rubber decreases. The next property is gets deformed on stretching. Again this property can be related to this property that is low sustenance to stretch. If we give stress to it, if we give external pressure to it, it will get deformed and stay there permanently in that new shape and size which is not desirable. Over here we have high absorption of water. This point can again be related to the low abrasion resistance because it is good in absorbing water. It can absorb water from humid atmosphere. It can absorb water from a tub of water and that water quantity inside that rubber increases changing its physical as well as chemical properties. The next property is it can be easily attacked by acids like HNO3 which is nitric acid, it's a very strong acid and H2SO4 again sulfuric acid, it's a strong acid. So now whenever we are talking about natural rubbers, the natural rubbers are unsaturated rubbers that means it has carbon, carbon and both of these carbons are joined by double bond. Every time the double bonds are unsaturated carbons and the second bond over here which is known as the pi bond because of this pi bond many acids can come and attack the pi bond and break the pi bond. The next is it can be easily attacked by organic solvents. If the acids are not attacking the pi bond, the other organic solvents can come and attack the pi bond. There are many organic solvents such as aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, carboxylic acids, some aromatic compounds, phenols, anilines, etc. And finally, we have attacked by oxygen, ozone, air, etc. So over here, if we do not have acids, which are strong acids like nitric acid, sulfuric acid, Again, if we do not have other kind of substances, that is organic solvents, then finally, if nothing else is attacking the double bond, the atmosphere will start attacking it. That means the oxygen and the ozone present in the atmosphere will start attacking it. So rubber can be attacked by water, 
oxygen, ozone, organic solvents, acids, almost anything and everything. And that is the reason why all these are the drawbacks or the undesirable properties of natural rubber. So over here in today's session, we studied various properties of natural rubber. We studied the various undesirable properties and the drawbacks of the same. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.